Good morning and welcome. Thank you for joining us today for Worldwide Communion for this service where we will recognize the ordinances of feet washing and the Lord's Supper. Feet washing will be done by a video demonstration today and we're going to invite you to prepare your own elements and join in with us for the Lord's Supper in your own home. Now, if you'd like a bulletin for today's service, you can go to our website, www.enolacog.com and download that bulletin into your device or your phone, or you can print it out for your use throughout this service. Now, in that bulletin, we have several announcements that we would like to share with you, and we'll begin by talking about what's up for the kids. As usual, we have our 9 a.m. preschool uh, Sunday School Bible lesson for the kids, 9 a.m. for preschool. Then there's one at 9.30 for elementary age students. Make sure you get your kids on there to see what we have. This will be on Facebook at 9 and 9.30, and after that, you can find it on Sunshine TV at any time. Also today, we have our Godly Relationships class that's going to be meeting in room number four. We do have two Sunday school classes that are going to be coming back into the church to meet during Sunday morning. Uh, one this week, one next week. We'll get to that in a moment. But Godly Relationships today at 9.15 a.m. Those classes that will be meeting in the building will also be on Zoom so that you have your option of how to attend. The full-fledged Sunday school with children's Sunday school and all the classes, we're not ready for that yet. But hang on, that day is coming. Today at the 1045 sanctuary service, it will also be an ordinance service like this. Tell anyone coming that they're welcome to join us in the sanctuary. They can go out in the uh, living room area and stay out there if they're not comfortable in the big crowd, or they can be out in the parking lot and listen to the service out there in their car or wherever they want, as long as they're on the property, tuning in at 89.9 FM. Now, last week we did have some technical difficulties with good old 89.9 FM. We're gonna get that working this week and that's a blessing. Let folks know coming that uh, yes, we are doing communion and if they are comfortable doing so, they can bring their own elements in their cars and take communion while we do so in the sanctuary by listening over the radio. Tonight at 7 p.m. we have a prayer service. On Monday, if you happen to be on the task force that's looking at the uh, excess funding, that'll be meeting at seven on Monday. Tuesday, Ladies Bible Studies at 10 in the Fellowship Hall, and the tech team will be meeting at 6 p.m. Wednesday, we have our 412 Youth Group and our Adult Bible Study. Youth will be meeting, weather permitting, out in the pavilion, and Bible Study will be in room number four or on Facebook Live, and the next day it will be accessible on Sunshine TV. Sunday is a regular lineup. It won't be an ordinance service, but we will have our regular worship services and all the other things we normally have on a Lord's Day. One change, and that is the willing ambassadors will be coming back to meet next Sunday at 9.15 a.m. in the Fellowship Hall. That will be in the hall, and you can also access it by Zoom. In fact, I was asked to read the actual announcement. It says, the willing ambassador Sunday school class We'll begin meeting in person on Sunday, October 11th from 9.15 to 10.15 a.m. in the main area of the Fellowship Hall. You can still tune in via Zoom at the same time if you desire to meet in person. We will, however, do some social distancing and we will use a microphone for the teacher. If you have any questions, please contact Pastor Sandy Bainey. So we invite you to contact Pastor Sandy if there's anything you need to know if you're part of that willing disciples, uh, willing ambassadors Sunday school class, excuse me, willing ambassadors next Sunday. I believe those are all the announcements that we have for today. So we're going to begin this worldwide communion day by listening to the prelude.
This morning's call to worship can be found in Psalm 77, verses 11 through 14. The psalmist writes, I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your wonders of old. I will ponder all your work and meditate on your mighty deeds. Your way, O God, is holy. What God is great like our God? You are the God who works wonders. You have made known your might among the peoples. Father, we thank you for this special day that we've come to celebrate Jesus worldwide. We pray today, Heavenly Father, that we would lift the name of the Lord Jesus high above all other names. And as we remember him today in very tangible ways, may we remember and relive and appreciate all that he has done for us. May this service be for and unto the Lord Jesus, for it's in his name that we pray. Amen. Would you join me in singing, I am thine, O Lord? I am thine, O Lord, I have heard thy voice and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn to thee. Draw me near, near, blessed. Precious bleeding sight, consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in sharing from 2 Chronicles chapter 31 and verse 5. It says, as soon as the command was spread abroad, the people of Israel gave in abundance the first fruits of grain, wine, oil, honey, and of all the produce of the field. And they brought in abundantly the tithe 
of everything. We thank you so much for sending your tithes and offerings here to ECOG as you continue to support this ministry. Some of you are mailing those offerings in. Others of you have set up your bill payment through your bank very creatively, and others of you may drop them off when you're here. Thank you for continuing to support kingdom work here at ECOG. And let's not forget to continue to be generous to others as God gives us opportunities to do, do so. And we serve as the hands and the feet and the voice of Jesus to others. What a blessing it is to do that. Will you join me now as we pray over our offering and our acts of generosity? Let's pray together. God, it is a blessing to worship you through giving. We pray that you would receive our tithes and offerings. We pray, Father, that you would multiply them in ways that we can't even imagine, that people would be reached with the message of Jesus. We pray as well, Heavenly Father, that uh, you would continue to encourage us and remind us to, to be generous to others and to be Jesus to others in tangible ways. Bless these gifts and tithes and offerings and our acts of kindness and generosity to one another. And we pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord has given us a wonderful opportunity, an opportunity that we call prayer, that we commune with him. And so we're going to take this opportunity now to go to the Lord in prayer. And because it is a communion Sunday, we'll be ending our intercessory prayer by inviting you to join in in praying the Lord's Prayer. Will you pray with me now? God, we just want to bless your name today, thanking you so much for all of your blessings thanking you for the common graces that you give to us, thanking you for the Lord Jesus as we remember him in a special way today. Father, many times as we go through life, we don't remember Jesus, we don't remember the Holy Spirit, we don't remember that which you have told us to do because we go our own way, because we think we know better than you. So Lord, for the times that we have done this and we have spurned your will and have had to have our own way and sinned in your sight, we ask you to forgive us. At this time, let us silently acknowledge our sins and confess them to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we just give you so much thanks today for those words of assurance of pardon in your word, reminding us that as far as the east is from the west, so far have you moved our, removed our transgressions from us. What a blessing, and we thank you for that. Today, Heavenly Father, we just want to continue to pray for this world on a day where we think about your church around the world. We think of those who are not a part of your church. We think about those, Heavenly Father, that are suffering, that are oppressed, those that are bound in the chains that Satan has bound them with by blinding their eyes. We pray, Heavenly Father, today that there would be a great revival around this world, that through your church and through the leading of the Holy Spirit, many would come to know Jesus as Savior and Lord of their lives. And Heavenly Father, if truth be told, we know people even in our own lives who do not know Jesus as Lord and Savior. So whether it's people far and abroad around this world or those closer to home, we pray that they would not feel comfortable, that rather, Heavenly Father, they would feel some degree of unrest until they make their peace with Jesus as Lord and Savior. And we pray your Holy Spirit to be drawing them to Jesus even now. At this time, let's lift to the Lord the names of people who need Jesus as their Savior and Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for what you're going to do in the lives of these individuals, drawing them to yourself. We look for a great harvest. Yes, we do. Heavenly Father, we want to pray now for your church worldwide. We pray you'd bless your church, especially as many are remembering Jesus in this special way through the Lord's Supper and perhaps in other ways. We pray, Heavenly Father, that we would recognize him as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Heavenly Father, we just want to pray also that you would help us here in this congregation to lift up Jesus as our King and our Lord and our guide and our Savior and friend. You have called us to be a lighthouse for you, guiding people to salvation and prepare people to face the storms of life. May we do that each and every day. 
Lord, regarding those storms of life, there are those who are facing those storms even now. We pray for your people, Heavenly Father, who have healing needs. They're sick, that is. We pray for those who have decisions to make and don't know what to do. For those with financial difficulties. We pray for those, Father, that are trying to make peace in the midst of a conflict. We pray for those, Father, that have needs that we can't even imagine. We pray, Lord, that you would be to them what they need in their time of need. And Heavenly Father, for each one who does have a need, may each one understand that your solution and your way may not be their way, but that's okay because you are sovereign and you are in control. We know that you know what is best. Father, we certainly pray that you'd bless the balance of this service today. We pray as we observe the washing of the saints' feet and we're reminded of just how important it is for us to serve one another and to be generous and kind and serve like Jesus did. And as we take that, the bread and the cup today in the Lord's Supper and we're reminded tangibly how much Jesus loves us, how much you love us, that you sent your Son to die in our place. May we appreciate all over again all that you have done for us. Heavenly Father, thank you for the blessings. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for this opportunity. And may we continue to be instant in prayer and to be reminded to pray as you have taught us to pray. And will you join me now? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, I guess you've heard by now that there's a lot of real estate out in California that is literally on fire. And what are they doing about it? It's no secret. They're sending oodles and oodles and oodles of firefighters from here, there, and everywhere out there to California to try to put those fires out. Hey, makes perfect sense. That's what needs to be done, right? Well, today as we continue our message series, The Christian Life, Shallow Versus Deep, and as we continue to talk about what a shallow Christian life looks like in this part of the series, we're going to find out that there's another kind of fire, a fire very different from the ones that we see in California or the one that ravaged through Williamstown, Pennsylvania this past week or even the one that may have started on your stove in a pan of grease. Yep, this fire is very different. It is actually the fire that is the Holy Spirit working in and through the lives of believers. It's likened to a fire. And unlike those fires that threaten to burn down California or a town up in Dauphin County or your stove and kitchen, the Holy Spirit is a fire we often try to snuff out, but yet we shouldn't want to do that. Quenching the Holy Spirit, it's definitely a symptom of a shallow Christian life. To find out about that, let's look at our scripture passage for today. It comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 22. We invite you to follow along in your own Bibles, or you can call it up on your phone or your tablet, or simply listen. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 to 22. Short passage with some short but to the point instructions for God's church. Beginning in verse 16, the Apostle Paul says, Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the Spirit. Do not despise prophecies, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. And there ends the lesson. So let's look at some background information on the Thessalonians. What do we need to know? Well, the Thessalonian church established by the Apostle Paul was in need of some encouragement, just like us today. Now, Paul was encouraging these young Christians to mature in their faith. Hey, 
We need that today as well. Also, the Thessalonians had a concern, maybe somewhat of a unique concern, and they were concerned because Jesus hadn't returned yet. They expected him to come back very quickly, and some of them, well, their family members were dying, and Jesus didn't return. What's going on, they said. They're confused. By the way, you can verify all of this with Dan Marrow, who's currently leading our study on 1 Thessalonians through our Wednesday evening uh, adult Bible study series. So therefore, Paul is going to give this body of believers counsel regarding how to mature in their faith and to be ready for that time when Jesus does return. So on that note, let's take a look and see some of Paul's easy to understand instructions for the Thessalonians and us. We'll be skipping around at several of these. I'm going to call them again the easy ones. We'll begin at verse 16. Paul says, rejoice always. Now wait, um, if we're to rejoice always, does that mean we're even supposed to rejoice on a really rotten day? Yeah. Now why is that? Because as the Thessalonians, and as we are aware, Jesus is going to return. And even if he does not return in our lifetime, we know that no matter how bad and how rotten things get down here, when we pass out of this life and into the next, we're going to be doing just fine. That's called hope. We have hope. We're going to be fine. Earlier in this chapter, in 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 8, Paul said, But since we are of the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. That full and final salvation, someday in heaven, where everything's going to be just fine, that's what keeps us going. That's why we can rejoice always, even on a rotten day. Verse 17. Pray without ceasing. Never give up on prayer. When we stop praying, that's when we really get into trouble. How about it? Verse 18. In everything, give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Whoa, time out. I need to give thanks for everything, including Satan and sickness and slamming the car door on my hand? Well, no, we don't have to thank God for all of those horrible things. But in all things, good and bad, we remain thankful to God because he is weaving all of it, the good stuff and the bad stuff, into his masterful, sovereign plan. And for us as believers, that plan looks really, really good. In fact, it's fantastic. The Bible reminds us in Romans 8, 28, and we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Let's skip now, now to verses 20 and 21. Paul says, do not despise prophetic utterances, but examine everything carefully. If someone is declaring a prophetic word, and in our context today, that would most surely be through the preaching of the word of God, don't despise that. But on the other hand, examine the message carefully. Make sure it's on target. That is tremendously good advice. And then in verses 21 and 22, hold fast to that which is good. Abstain from every form of evil. In generally speaking, this is a great way to live the Christian life. Hold to what's good. Keep away from that which is evil. I guess it's sort of like cleaning out your garage. If you have good stuff, hold on to it. If it's no good, pitch it. Gone. Those are those easier to understand instructions for the Thessalonians and for us today. Good stuff to remember, but now we're going to get to the main point of our topic today. And guess what? It's a harder one. So let's see Paul's one harder to understand instruction for the Thessalonians and us. It can be found in verse 19. 
What is it? Well, simply put, he says, do not quench the spirit. Now let's pick that phrase apart so we understand what it means. It's kind of hard to understand. Let's start with the word quench. What does that mean? Well, as you know, it means literally to extinguish, as in to put out a fire. It's used in other places in the Bible, in Mark 9, 48, for literally putting out a fire, and in Matthew 25, in verse 8, for a, a lamp being put out, a lamp with a flame, of course. Now, metaphorically, in this passage, though, quenching the Holy Spirit doesn't mean that we're literally putting out a fire with a fire extinguisher or a bucket of water. Metaphorically, in this passage, it means, quenching means, to stifle, to stifle. Now, you old timers out there can probably remember Archie Bunker telling his dear wife, Edith, stifle yourself. Yeah. What did he mean by that? Stop. Be quiet. Shh. No more. Put an end to it. So we're not to quench, we're not to stifle the spirit. So what or who is the Holy Spirit that we're not supposed to stifle? It's who is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit is compared to a fire in this passage because he's compared to a fire in other passages. On the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 3, what happened when the Holy Spirit came into the world in a new way on that particular day? Well, he came to us in a new, fresh way as tongues of fire, represented by tongues of fire that rested on those gathered. Interesting. And in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 6, Paul told Timothy to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. Both of those cases, the Holy Spirit being represented by fire. And that's why here the Apostle Paul is very clear. Don't quench this fire. Don't stifle the Holy Spirit. Now, the next obvious question is, is what does the Holy Spirit do in through us? And how do we quench or stifle him? What's going on here? Well, we're going to look at a list of ways in which the Holy Spirit works in our life. This is not an exhaustive list. We'll just look at some of those things. Look at four different scriptures and we'll then talk about how do we quench or stifle the Holy Spirit working in our life? First one, John chapter 14 and verse 26. We know that the Holy Spirit teaches us. Jesus told his disciples regarding after his death, burial, and resurrection, and ascension to the Father, this is what would happen. But the helper, the counselor, the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. The Holy Spirit is wonderful because whether we're witnessing to someone, whether we're facing a choice and we're not sure what to do, or we just need some knowledge from the Word of God and we just are a little bit foggy, the Holy Spirit says, hang on, opens up that file cabinet, here you go, this is what you need. He brings to our remembrance that which we need, that which Jesus taught us. That's a good thing. The Holy Spirit also causes us to grow spiritually. Several weeks ago, we said if you want to have a deeper Christian faith to go from the shallow to the deep, you can't do it on your own by your own works. No way. It's not going to happen. The Holy Spirit causes us to grow. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, in verse 18, the Apostle Paul says, And we all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit, causing us to grow in our walk with God, moving us from shallow to deeper. 
The Holy Spirit also gives us gifts. He gives us gifts. Now, the gifts we're talking about here, it's not like a new cell phone for Christmas or, I don't know, a new pair of jeans for your birthday. No, nothing like this. The gifts we're talking about are different abilities, not necessarily natural, ta natural talents, excuse me, but abilities that God gives to believers so that we can come together and work for the kingdom and do God's will in his world. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 4, Paul talks about this. 1 Corinthians 12, 4. He says, Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit, the one Spirit, the common Holy Spirit, puts different kinds of gifts into different believers. Your gift may be exhortation and giving and helps. My gift may be prophecy and teaching and administration. I believe those are my gifts. Someone else's gifts. They may have the gift of encouragement and mercy. All kinds of gifts that God gives us. And it's from the one spirit. And he, he gives us these not so that we can brag and say how great we are, but rather to use them in his kingdom. Good things happen whenever we use our spiritual gifts. And one more thing the Holy Spirit does. Ah, how appropriate for today on Worldwide Communion Day. The Holy Spirit, he draws us to be unified. He's the unity creator, if you will. In the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 3, the Apostle Paul says this. Paul says, we should be eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Peace, a bond of peace from the unity of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. He draws us to be unified with one another. Because on our own, we're very good at fighting and bickering and staying apart from one another and making lots of enemies. It's the Holy Spirit that draws his church together. So that's the Holy Spirit. And that's what he does through us. So what about this bit about quenching or stifling him? Well, here's the key to remember. We quench or stifle the Holy Spirit when we resist all of the above, everything we talked about, those four points and more. Whatever he's trying to do in and through us, when we say to the Holy Spirit, be stifled, we are quenching that powerful, amazing fire from God. Now, how does this happen? How does this happen? I'm going to show you some diagrams, and so that you can see these better, I'm going to get out of the way so that they appear better for you. But what you see before you are some of these familiar diagrams that we've been showing throughout this series. We will remind you that each and every believer faces a conflict every day in his or her mind. And that conflict is, who am I going to listen to? Our minds can listen to the Holy Spirit who lives in us in the inner man, inside of us. But we can't forget that we still live in these bodies of flesh where the sinful nature is. And our minds can listen to the sinful nature and carry out those works of the flesh. What's it going to be, believer? Are we going to listen to the Holy Spirit or are we going to listen to the flesh? That's the battle we face each and every day. Knowing that this is our makeup and this is what it is like to live as a Christian, here is how quenching of the Holy Spirit comes about in our life. Basically, what happens is, in our mind, which again lives in these bodies of flesh, but the Holy Spirit there is with us, the flesh tells the mind, hey mind, you tell the Holy Spirit to be stifled. And when we listen to the flesh, and we say to the Holy Spirit who's drawing us into unity, who's trying to bring something to memory to us so that we can share with someone, or do the right thing. Or causing us to grow spiritually. 
or encouraging us to use our gifts. And when we say to the Holy Spirit, for those reasons or many, many more, we say, no, Spirit, no. Be stifled. What are we doing? We are quenching the Holy Spirit. And that's what we don't want to do. So on that note, I will ask you this. Are you tired of living your Christian life with a weak, shallow faith? Do you desire to go deeper, but you feel that you're stuck where you're at, back here, shallow, not getting too deep? Could it be because you are quenching the Holy Spirit? Is there a war going on in the members of your flesh telling your mind to tell the Holy Spirit, be stifled? You see, the Holy Spirit is a fire we often try to snuff out. If that's the case, if that's occurring in our lives, now is the time for our minds to listen to the Holy Spirit and with our minds tell the flesh, no flesh, you be stifled and be open to the Spirit's work in us. That's what needs to happen so that we may enjoy a fuller and deeper Christian life. May it be so for each of us. Amen and amen. At this point in our service, we will move into our ordinances. We'll begin with our feet washing demonstration and then follow up with our remembrance of Jesus through the ordinance of the Lord's Supper. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, when the devil had already put in the heart of Jesus his chariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments and taking a towel, tied it around his waist. When, then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, do not wash my feet. Jesus answered him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, the one who is bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not every one of you. For he knew who was to betray him. That was why he said, not all of you are clean. When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right for so am I. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say unto you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them.
In preparation for the ordinance of the Lord's Supper, if you've not done so already, we invite you at this time to prepare your own elements at home. Any kind of bread, and any kind of grape or fruit flavored drink will suffice. If you need to, feel free to pause the video now and go and prepare those elements. The churches of God practice an open communion. What this means is you do not need to be a member of this church or actually of any physical church body to be welcome to the table today. But there is one thing that we believe is absolutely essential, and that is this. You must be a member of the Church of Jesus Christ to come and to participate in the Lord's Supper. So therefore, if you can truly say Jesus is Lord, if you have been born again by accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, then yes, you are welcome to the table. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, the Apostle Paul reminds us of the Lord's Supper by offering us these words of institution, where he says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, in the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he returns. And there's a very stark reminder in that passage as well where Paul says, But let a man examine himself, and so eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eats and drinks unworthily eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Therefore, we believe it's very important for us to approach the table with a pure heart and a pure mind. So at this time, we're going to have a time of silent prayer, a prayer of confession and repentance, where once again, we can ask the Lord to forgive us of our sins so that we can approach his table in a worthy manner. Will you now join me in that time of silent prayer where we ask the Lord to forgive us of our sins? God, thank you for the forgiveness that you offer. And we claim those words of assurance of pardon that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Thank you, Lord, for that promise today. Thank you for your forgiveness. And thank you for this wonderful reminder through the bread and the cup of how that forgiveness came to us through the Lord Jesus. For it's in his name that we pray. Amen. Will you now join me as we have prayer over the bread? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this marvelous symbol, bread, a reminder of the body of Jesus given for us. We pray today that as we receive it, that we will remember and be renewed in our minds all over again just how much you love us, that you sent your son to give his life so that we may have life. May this symbol remind us of Jesus' body given for us. We ask these favors in Jesus' name, amen. Jesus said, take, eat. This is my body given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Together, let us remember him. Will you now join me as we have prayer over the cup? Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we know that without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. But we also know that Jesus did come and give his life, shedding his blood so that we may have life. Father, we thank you for this reminder. And we thank you also, Heavenly Father, for the reminder of the unity around the world through your church under the banner of the Lord Jesus, who gave his life so that we may have life. May this cup, may this symbol just remind us just how much you love us, that the Son of God bled and died for us, and we pray it all in Jesus' name, amen. Jesus said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. 
This do as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. Together let us remember him. Amen. Would you join me now in our closing hymn, Cleanse Me. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart such a tangible way with believers all around the world. But bless us here, Heavenly Father, locally, that we may carry out your will in your world. May we forsake quenching your Holy Spirit, but openly and freely be Jesus to others in your world. We ask all of these favors in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us for this Worldwide Communion Ordinance Service. Be blessed. <laughs>